back to Mars, one human family. Asteroids, one human family. Jupiter, one human family. Jupiter's moons, one human family. Saturn's rings, one human family. Here we come, one human family. To the moon, one human family. On to Mars, one human family. Asteroids, one human family. Jupiter, one human family. Saturn's rings, one human family. Uranus, one human family. Neptune, one human family. Kuiper belt, one human family. Pluto, one human family. Planet nine, one human family. Back to Earth, one human family. Back to Earth, one human family. Back to Earth, one human family. Greetings and salutations, one human family. I am happy to see you. I am so happy to see you. Thank you for being here. I am grateful. It is such a surprise to see you every single time. It is like waking up and opening presents. It is like today is a gift day. Today is a gift day, you're here, I'm here, and that makes it our time. And that means the world to me. I hope it means the world to you. My name is Mike Mongo. I'm an astronaut teacher and you are an astronaut student. And I am grateful for you being here. It doesn't matter to me if you're a young student or if you're a middle grade student or a middle age student or an old student or a, a used to be a student. If you are here and I am here and we're having this conversation, that makes it our time. And I am so happy to share this time with you. We are at episode 33 of Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures. Pow, pow, pow. Don't forget to, oh yeah. Look, I'm just gonna knock it out of the way. I always, I, something's spinning around over here on the gimbal. Greetings and salutations. Subscribe, hit the subscribe button. If you're a grown up, hit uh, buy Mike a coffee. Da, 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 da. And uh, all of you people, all, all of you, you, no, you, you. You have been reaching out to me at Mike Mongo Astronaut Teacher on Instagram and I really appreciate it. I love this conversation. Thank you very much. We are changing the entire world. That is the amazing part about this conversation. Our conversation, look, there's a ton of stuff going on in the world. It's quarantine right now, it's pandemic, it's all that stuff. And right now we are changing, we are changing our outlook of the future. We're dreaming about what is possible. Imagine a world where it works out for everyone, where it works out for all of us, where it works out for you and you lead the way for the rest of us. I am aligned to that future. I am very excited about that future. Wow. Think about it. You know, that's what I always say. Everything always works out. It's rule number one. It's, it's, my, it's my guiding principle. Everything always works out. Gimbal, over here. Everything always works out. I want you to know that. It's one of those things I want you to have in your head. Remember, there's, there's uh, the uh, utility that's in your head. Utility is a little, a little something that helps you every single day, every single way. And that utility is, how am I helping? So we get to ask ourselves that all the time. Like, I know how I'm helping right now. Maybe, maybe I'm helping somebody in your life who who needs you to be paying attention to this message so that you are in charge of your future, so you realize you have that power and authority. Maybe I'm helping you in the future. You and I are working together to help your future self. You and I are working together right now to help your future self. How are, how are you helping? You're here. That's a great help. What a great help that is. How am I helping? 
Yeah, remember, everything always works out. That's one of my principles. That's one of my guiding principles. That's one of the things I always, always remind myself of, no matter what. And it's important to remember. Because of what we're talking about today. Here's what we're going to be talking about today. Gamble over here. Thank you. Setbacks. Have you ever heard of a setback? You know what a setback is? A setback. You ever have a, have something that sets you back a little bit when you're after your goal, when you're when you're working to get when you're working to pursue a, a goal. What's another word for goal? When you're working to pursue a an objective. When you're working to pursue an objective. I think something's on my glasses. Let me see if I got a little tissue right here. Pop pop out. Da, 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 da. Look, I'm all I'm all buttoned up. Buck, buck, buck. Button up right here. Buck, buck. Button up right here. Hey, Gimbal over here. You can be up here, Gimbal. <coughs> Hi. Excuse me. <coughs> I've got a little something on my glasses. Yeah, an objective is this thing that you want in your life. Something, like you ever have a gift, like something that you wanted that is an objective? Like, um, what would be a great objective? Oh, video game, a video game system. Sometimes a video game system. Or a new computer. Or a new tablet. Or a cell phone. Or a new pair of shoes. Or a, a jacket, some kind of special jacket. All these different things, these are goals, these are objectives. And sometimes we pursue these objectives. Are you with me? Sometimes we pursue these objectives diligently, like really with authority, like we're really asserting our authority over life. Like we're taking charge of our life. And so we're asserting our, Gimbal, not up there, Gimbal, hi. Hi, hi, good to see you. So we're, 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 asserting, we're asserting our authority in our life, when we take charge and we pursue our goals, when we're at, when we go after our objectives with with intention, when we when we intend, like I want, like when you get when you get older, you may you may decide that you want a, a particular kind of car, or vehicle, or or airplane. Even people have airplanes. It's not that uncommon. It's not just for, it is, airplanes are not just for people who are, who are rich or overly wealthy. There's a overly poor, there's poor, there's a, some, there's um, not too poor, there's um, lower middle class, there's middle class, there's upper middle class, there's a not too rich, there's rich, and then there's overly rich. There's all kinds of different ways of being. And every single one of the people in all those different groups, because I got friends in all of those different groups, I, I don't have a problem with how, how people's money is. If, they're, if, if sometimes we don't have enough and sometimes we have too much, it just happens that way. So when we're in that situation, like maybe in any situation, if you're overly poor, maybe your situation is just to have enough money to get by with shelter and food and, and medicine and clothing. And if you're overly rich, maybe you're trying to figure out how to make the world a better place, I hope. And so you got to figure out what, and so we have goals and objectives, or maybe you're any of those, any of those levels. And you decided that you want a new car or a car. Even there's a particular kind of car you want and you go after it with intention. That's the car I want. Sometimes just having a car can change a person's life, especially if you have a driver's license. So. These are goals that we go after. These are things that we, we, can, we, we can set our intention. Another intention, another intention could be like, I want to get an A on a test. Maybe there's, a, maybe there's some class that you want to do really well in. Maybe you've decided that you want to be an engineer or a physicist and you, you get to be good at math. And then you, take, and then you decide that you're going to take the, your first science courses and you're going to be an A student at it. What, what would be another example of a, a goal or a t intention? Maybe there's a college that you want to go to when you get to college. Yes, this happens all the time. So I get to work with college, with high school students who are going to college and they get to make applications to the particular colleges they want to go to. Excuse me. Yep, that's right. High school students that they work with. Oh, the person who just rang through on the phone, Andy Hatch, who knows that I'm on my show right now. Um, he, he has set his intention for a high school, a high school that he wanted to go to. Where he was going didn't have the right high school for him, and he had the kind of grades that enabled him to go to another high school. That's awesome. 
So he set his intention on what high school he wanted to go to. He wanted to go to a high school that developed a particular set of skills in him. And because he did the work, he had that opportunity. And he got it. Now, Andy has a brother who's, uh, who's uh, already through college now. He's already through college, so I can tell a story. But I was there when Andy's brother didn't do the work in high school and didn't get into the college that he wanted to go into. I was there, I was there the day before he got accepted to college. And he had not done the work, I want you to know. And I got to call him on it. I said, look, man, I want you to learn from this moment. I want you to learn from this. You didn't do the work. Like you had an intention, but you didn't do the work. So you're not getting into these colleges that, you, that you've wanted to go to because you didn't do the work. Those are setbacks. But don't worry, it's going to work out because everything always works out. But I want you to remember this moment so that you invest in yourself in the future. I want you, I can only have this conversation, I can only have that conversation with him then. At that very moment, we sat in his living room because he, he was so busy with doing all the stuff he wanted to do in life, he really couldn't hear anybody else. Even when everybody was saying, hey, you have to pay attention to stuff or you get to pay attention to stuff. It's important. But he couldn't hear anybody. Teenagers. And he didn't really want to hear that message that I had to deliver, but that was the only time that I could get through to him. And guess what happened? This is why people keep me around. The very next day he got accepted into college in the university. And his mood went from down here to up here. He was like, he was like, and then the sudden he was like, it was awesome to behold. And it was awesome to be present for that. So he had done enough work to get into the one college that allowed him to move forward. And he took the advice and he built on that. And now he's a pretty good success. It's been, it's been work. And here's why it's been work. Because no matter how good we are, there's always going to be setbacks. There's always going to be setbacks. Let's go back to my buddy Andy for a minute, the one I was just telling you about. Andy went away to, after high school, he went away to a college and he studied, he's like, I'm going to study business. I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to, he, though he was, ter he is terrific at science, though he is terrific at, at engineering, fantastic at it, though he loves building stuff like robots and spaceships, no kidding, as long as I've known him, he decided that he was going to go into business. He was going to take a business degree because it was the practical decision to make, which, you know, can't argue. Like I was, I was disappointed because I was like, this, this young person right here is a natural born spaceship builder. Like this person can do whatever they want and they've done the work. But if this is the thing they want to pursue, then, then I got to let them go and let them go do their thing. And then two years, two years into their college degree, two years into studying for business, in another state, they had traveled to another state to go to college. They called me up and said, I've changed my mind. I said, what do you mean? I said, I want to study engineering. I was like, well, you're already two years into it. Like you've already, like you, you're, he goes, I, th I think I'm going to change schools. I'm like, I don't think, I don't think that you are Andy. Like most people don't do that. They, most people go through with it really. Well, and he goes, I'm calling to let you know that I'm changing schools. I'm like, okay, all right, that's great. I appreciate it. So um, when are you going to, when are you going to, what school are you going to go to? And he goes, I already applied and I already got accepted and I'm going to engineering school at University of Central Florida. That's where he goes. So this is a couple years ago. Now he's, this next semester, he's graduating. Like it, it like I'm so proud of him. Mm. Like I'm proud of you. Like I'm proud of you. That's how this feeling I have right now is how I feel about you. Okay. Your successes fill me with pride. What you achieve, it fills me with pride. And so what he achieved, it filled me with pride. And now he's about to graduate with an engineering degree. But here's the point. For him to do that, he had to take courses over again. He had to move and travel and he had to do all of that work. That is what people call a setback. 
And sometimes a setback is intentional and sometimes it isn't. And sometimes it's just something that happens and we got to deal with it. And sometimes it's a choice we make. Sometimes we go down a path a certain way and we realize that's not the right path and we get to backtrack, we get to walk it back and then go on to the next path. And those are setbacks. And here is what a setback is. I want you to know, I want you to get this. Because it's not just about making a, a decision and change your mind and then, and then getting to rework it. Another setback can be, um, let me think about some. Oh, people open up businesses all the time. People like, like Andy was, stu- was studying business. People open businesses. I have plenty of friends who have opened businesses and the businesses fail. 90% of all businesses that open fail. That's a fact. That means they close. People lose money and then life goes on. That life goes on part is called a setback. It's not a setback that life goes on. It's a setback that somebody opened a business or a group of people opened a business. If they're friends or if they're business partners, sometimes it's both, sometimes it's not. And then it closes and it's a failure. That's a setback. That's a personal setback because it affects them as people. And it's a professional setback because it affects them as a career. That's a, that, would be a, that would be a personal and professional setback. For me, a, a personal setback was when my mom died two years ago. Almost two years ago. That was a personal setback. It wasn't so, uh, it wasn't so unexpected. It was, it was, a, it was a, for me, it was something that, it was like some, I lost something. It took me a while to realize that my mom was with me in my heart every, every single day. It took me a while to realize that. And that's a very grown up thing to realize. And it's a treasure once you get it. That's the miracle of life. That's why I say that uh, everything always works out because even when things look like they're failures or seem like or we perceive them as, as um, mistakes or tragedies, what they are are setbacks. Because life goes on. Like even in the work, even all the, even in history, look, in history, some bad stuff has happened. True. Come on. That's a setback for human, humankind, for civilization. That's a setback. When we do stuff wrong or bad that affects everything and everybody, it's a setback. But here's the good news. Here's the good news. Here's what a setback is. The most important thing about a setback is right here. A setback is temporary. A setback is a temporary failure. It's a temp. It's only. It, it doesn't last forever. A setback, a setback is temporary. And really, when it comes down to it, all setbacks are temporary. And all of these situations are, that are that are that are problematic or failures or that we like we get over it. Even the worst thing that could possibly happen to us, even the really, really, really bad mistakes. People make, grown-ups make mistakes. I mean, you see it in the news. People make mistakes. We make bad choices. And sometimes we don't own it, and a lot of times we do. And sometimes we have to pay for it. And then the people who, who really have the kind of character that, that I am working to encourage in you face the, the challenge of the failure and then develop character. That's how you express yourself as a person. This is big. This, I, I'm not, I get it. This is really kind of mature stuff. Mature meaning intelligent. Not mature meaning grown up per se. It's just intelligent. A setback is something, like what if you, what, like remember the example I said about um, taking a class, a science class, you decide that you're going to go into science, you decide. A student decides that they're going to go into st- into science or some or mathematics or something, and they and the very first co- course that we take, we fail. I'm not joking. Fail. I'm talking straight up. F. Fail. That's a setback. And some people quit right then. Some people quit right then. Some people apply to be astronauts. They do not get selected, and they quit right then. But then there's the other ones of us. And this is what I'm working and encouraging you. And this is why we're talking about setbacks today so that you know about this. The other, the other opportunity when we experience a failure because these things are temporary. We will go through hard times. 
And then when we have, when, and setbacks and mistakes and failures help us to develop character to deal and face these situations. There's a terrific saying when, when in business and, and, and uh, there's a terrific saying in business. It is, uh, if, you haven't fa- say, if you haven't failed, you will fail. And you can say that in life. If you have not experienced failure yet, you will experience it. We experience failure in life. How we, how we respond to it, is it that's, that's, how we, that's how we develop character and it is also a display of our character. Disappointment can be a setback. Even something as simple as a disappointment, something as simple as like, oh, we were going to go out for dinner tonight, but something came up. How about that one? Something came up, so we can't do it. That's a setback. Like we, our intention was to go get pizza tonight. That's not happening. Something came up. It's a setback. How do you face that situation? Do you throw a tantrum like I used to do? Do you pout like I used to do? Or do you look for a different way like I do now? I mean, I've got friends like, like uh, uh, my own son, R- Ravon. The one I claim, I got, I got a bunch of them. I claim them all. I love them all. He, he, he has had setbacks in his life. When his dad died when he was 14, that was a setback. And look where he is now. He's a champion at age 22. It was a setback that he couldn't, at 14, how, think how difficult that would be to wrap your mind around and wrap your heart around. And look, and look, because he was able to do that, it, it grew his heart, his sense of compassion. He has a sense of compassion for other people who go through setbacks. See, that's, that's part of it. That's one of the things we take away from it. Excuse me. Setbacks come and go in life. And here's why. The takeaways. Like the first, the first thing I explained was that setbacks are temporary. Even somebody, um, Leland Melvin, the astronaut, he lost his hearing in an astronaut training exercise. It was a temporary setback. He did. He got the. He got some special surgery, and he got his hearing back. He kept on going. He kept on working and trying, and then he got to go to space. That what a setback to lose your hearing, and you're in astronaut training, and then you can't be an astronaut anymore. Think about that setback. If he can do this, you can do this. If somebody can overcome deafness, deafness, if somebody can overcome that kind of setback, and trust me, people do every single day, we, we learn to overcome these because you've got people like me in your life supporting you and encouraging you. You've got the people who do definitely care and love, love you, care about you and love you. You've got those people. I'm one of them. So he had the right support around him and he went to the, those people that support him, those individuals, the people that are behind Leland Melvin, like they believe in him. He's done the work. And then he faced that as that deafness, which could have been a permanent setback, which was a, it became a temporary setback and he used it as a stepping stone. He used that to get to the next place. When NASA saw that he was able to overcome something like going deaf, what a display of character. They invited him back. He had already played NFL football. He had already got his engineering degree from college. He was already picked to be an astronaut and training. And then he overcame deafness. Some bad stuff happened to him when he was young and he overcame that setbacks they're temporary they don't have to be they can be permanent we're allowed to we're, we have the opportunity to choose to fail we have the opportunity to choose to quit i acknowledge that i'm just not that's not what i'm selling to you that's not what i'm enrolling you in i'm enrolling you in your own power which i see which i understand which i'm really clear on i got that about you amazing awesome powerful human what's better than that and he used it as a stepping stone to get to the next place, Gimbal. We, we set setbacks 
one of the best things about setbacks is we learn from the failure experience. We learn from the mistakes. They are setbacks. Oh my gosh, my mom passing away. My heart is so much bigger now as a consequence of that experience. And it was because of all the love that I put into her. I took care of her for five years. Me and my good friend, Leone. Like we took care of her. And it was work. And sometimes it, it was terrible work. And then after she passed away, all the terrible parts about it disappeared and all the times that we spent together, they showed up. I'm sharing them with you right now. I have, I've known students that have gotten in car accidents. They, nobody got hurt, but it cost a lot of money. That's a setback and it's frustrating. And it seems like, well, like what if you say are saving money for some special thing and then you, you have a car, you're a teenager, you've got your driver's license, you have a car, you're driving around, could be anything, but it's, we're talking about a car in this one and then you get in a car wreck. And maybe the car is demolished, is just like unusable or it requires a whole bunch of repairs. Nobody hurt. Well, that's a setback. How do you handle that? It's okay to be frustrated for a while. It's, it's okay to be disappointed for a while. It's okay to be sad for a while. And then what? How do we transform this, this bad situation into something that launches us forward into the future? That is the trick of setbacks. Figuring out the lesson that is in every mistake or failure or disappointment. There's a lesson there. All the bad stuff, any bad thing that happens to us, there's a lesson in there for us to grow from. It's almost like the solution is inside the problem. The solution is inside the problem. And also remember this, there's something super, super important to remember about setbacks. They happen to everyone. Setbacks happen, it happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. We wouldn't be human beings if we, if, if we didn't experience setbacks. All humans experience setbacks. We all experience setbacks. It's part of being who we are. It's how we respond to the setbacks. It's how you respond to the setbacks. It's how we respond to the setbacks that we face in our life. Heck, people that you know have such terrible situations, for sure. And you may not even know that they have a, a situation to deal with. Grown-ups, students, teachers, people that you know, for sure. And, yet and some of them are managing it really well. And a lot of them are asking for help from others because that's important. That's why when I, I have you remember to think all the time, how am I helping? How am I helping? When you're, in a, when you're in the regular world and you're just out and about asking, how am I helping? So that you become the kind of person that when you need help, somebody wants to be there for you. Powerful, right? This is the whole point. I don't help people so that they help me. I help people because that's who I am. I want you to grow up to live, work, and play in space. I want you to be the best space person, best space explorer, best astronaut, best human air that you can be. I'm investing in that. What you do with it after that, that's on you. That's not on me. If you choose to go on and help other people and make the world a better place after all this energy that I put into you, that's awesome. And if you choose not to do that, that's not on me. That's not on me. The opportunity for me is when you choose to do it. And then the, that when you grow up, you're me, and then you encourage, you are the person that stands for other people who are coming after you. This is how we make the world a better place, 100%. So easy. We lift one another. Somebody lifted me, and now I lift you. And, now, and then in the future, after you get lifted, you go ahead and lift up whoever else is in your life. You can lift, you can, if you have a mom and dad in your life, you can lift them simply by saying, I love you. Have you said, I love you to the person that you love today, the person who loves you? Have you said that? People are like, oh, I don't want to say that. Why? Why? 
It's what you have to give. It's, it, it's really actually very free. It's the simplest thing you have to give. And yet there's, sometimes there's a restraint. Like we hold ourselves back. Oh, I don't want to say I love you. Not to a girlfriend or a boyfriend. To a, to a dad, a mom, a dad. Not everybody has dads. Do you have a dad? Do you have a dad? Do they love you? Do they? Not just kid around, but do they? Do they show it all the time? Are they doing good stuff? Are you one of the people that has one of those kind of dads? There's even fewer than that. There's, there's the people that don't have dads and there's the people that have okay dads and there's people that have dads that are just there sometimes and there's people have dads in their life every single day. Are you one of those people? You're rich then. So since you're rich, what you have, the wealth you have to give it away is to the person that, who, who pours it into you, say these magic words. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Don't say it like this. I love you. Look up, look them in the eyes and tell them the truth. I love you. As a boy, you know I love my mom. Oh my Google. Boys love moms and girls love dads. This is not, it's not a law. It's just pretty common. And so uh, it's just one of those things. Very funny. And so I loved my mom. Oh, and I still love my mom. And I got to tell her that so many times. Like I've got a video when the last time she and I talked together, and I said, have I told you I love you? And she said, like a million times. I saw that yesterday. And those are the things that get us through when we have setbacks. Those, those, are, the, those are the things that give value to life. Those are why we want to go space in the first place is to bring the best of humankind, to turn humankind into space kind. That's what I want you to do is to turn humankind into space kind, to bring the best and most wonderful things about us to the rest of the universe. I don't care if it's starting with the moon. Like I said, every, every, when you set your attention, you go from the moon, you can go to Mars, you go to Jupiter, excuse me, asteroid belt, then you go to Jupiter, then you go to Saturn, then you go to Uranus, then you go to Neptune, then you go to the Kuiper belt, then you go to Pluto, then you go to uh, my friend uh, Kiko, da uh, no, um, oh, what's his name? I got a friend who discovered planet nine. He's got, a, he's got some math that shows there's another planet out there that we don't know about. Then after that, the Oort cloud. Then after that, inter inter the interstellar medium. And then after that, the next solar system. And then that's what we can bring to the universe. And maybe in your lifetime, and it starts now, it starts today. And we start by doing things like telling people we love them because it develops our character. Because what's the point of doing anything if we don't have that? Like that's what gets us through setbacks. It's what matters. It's the people in our life are like, ah, I've seen worse. Remember my friend Vesta? who used to tell us no matter how bad it was, that's all right, honey, I've seen worse. Vesta Salmon, love her. And now I get to share it with you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what setback. It could be grades. Grades are a setback. Sometimes if you have a bad grade and you're, what if you wanted to be an all A student and you got a B? What if you have never got an A? What if you only had D's and F's and you've been working to get a C? And you didn't get it and you tried and you tried and you tried or you didn't get this, the A. There's different things. I don't, I don't, I do not, I do not um, judge you on your grades. That's not how I'm deciding on whether you're good or not, on, on whether you're talented or not, on whether you're wonderful and amazing and awesome or not. I'm judging that because I know your heart. That's how I determine how you're amazing and awesome and and talented and beautiful because I know your heart because I was you. The setbacks in my life allowed me to be me. When I didn't have somebody like me in my life, I grew up to become them so that I am them for you. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the setbacks. Happens to everyone. I use them as stepping stones. Happens to everyone. I use them as stepping stones. They were temporary. I don't have the same setbacks that I had when I was you. I'm a grown up now. I've worked it out with friends. Lastly, I want to tell you, experience leads to success. We can't have this without this. If we get this without this, we're going to lose this. 
If we get experience, if we get success without experience, we're going to lose success because we have to have experience to keep success. If we want success in our life, we have to have experience and experience includes setbacks. There's people that tell us to race to failure, to run to failure. Eh, do your best. Try. When, I, when there's a saying, uh, Yoda, oh, uh, there is no try. There is do and do not. That's great. But that, it, it means that there's two different kinds of try. When there, there's the try that we, we put our heart into it and we actually did the work and we fail anyway, that's okay. That's a, but then there's the other kind of try where we're like, I tried. And that's not true. Oh, well, I tried. That's only halfway. That's not true. My friends who, um, I work to make sure that everybody has a place in space. I work to make sure that every single one of you that I'm talking to has a place in space, that you have the opportunity to live, work, and play in space. And so when I talk with grownups who aren't making that space, and they're like, hey, we tried, we tried, we did, we tried to reach out, no one, no one talked to us. Oh, did you? Did you try? Did you try? Because anytime I try, I put my heart to it, into it, and even if I fail, I go back. I go back. I use my setback to learn and figure out how to do it right. Or I learn and, and take away from my experience and do something totally different, which is my intention in the first place, which is the thing I really wanted to do to begin with. When we started making cars, did you know some of the cars, the Demaxian had three wheels? Uh, that was um, a Buckminster Fuller came up with a car with three wheels. And, you know, some people say it's a great car, but we, we're, we're, four, we're using four wheels on cars. So, like, we, we try new things. He tried, though. He tried. He built a car. It works. It's, there's still Demaxians out there. People still make Demaxians. And that's real trying. He didn't give up. He just failed. And maybe he wasn't, he wasn't at the right time in the right place. People come up with ideas at the wrong time. Like I told, I, I was talking about um, last week about how, um, like if John F. Kennedy had been alive in the 1800s and said, let's go to the moon. Well, in the 1800s, we wouldn't be able to pull it off. But when John F. Kennedy said it in the 1960s, let's go to the moon. We're going to the moon. We had the right technology. We had the right stuff. And that's how it worked. So timing, timing matters. People come up with good ideas. I mean, like there have been amazing video game systems that people created, but they weren't, they were a little ahead of their time and they failed. And then people built on the technology and then built something amazing. There have been computers. The Macintosh computer that we have right now. Like I have a big Mac over here. <laughs> Here's a setback, I cracked, I cracked my Mac, you see that? Setback. But uh, the experience taught me how to fix a screen so that it works even when it's got a crack in it. So that led to success. It was a temporary setback. I was disappointed. And then I experienced success as a consequence of it. See, I used it as a stepping stone. And now my skills are better. So um, people come up with uh, oh, PCs. So uh, there was a computer company that Steve Jobs built. After he was, people don't really know this, but he built a computer that we use as the Mac now. In between, he, he created the Macintosh computer, the Apple computer, he created the A Apple computer, Mac. And then he left the company, created another compu computer, and then brought it back, and then carried the company forward to new things that make it the company that has the iPhone today, like we, that I'm doing this, doing this on. And that is, that is using setbacks, experience into success using setbacks, the experience of setbacks, to generate character and success. To use the experience of setbacks to generate character and success. Okay? Don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of setbacks. It doesn't mean that we want them. It just means when they show up, we use them in a different way. We think of them differently. And that's important. That's how we feel about things that really matters. Like, is this, is this the end of me? I mean, oh, wow. How many times? Um, when, uh, let's see. Oh, boy. Oh, my Google. My college career was a train wreck. 
oh my gosh, I've been through so much growing up that I was not talented in dealing with college environments. And that's one of the reasons I went for 13 years. Also because I loved going to college. It was so much fun and there were so many different colleges to go to and all these different other things. And so I had setbacks. When I ran out of money while I'm paying for my own college, that was a setback. And yet here I am today, astronaut teacher. So that's how it, how it, uh, it gets to this place. I'm not sure time's right. Well, I looked at the clock at just the right time. So can we talk about a setback I had with you once before? Okay, like with you. Remember when we did the space blackberries and I planted them in the, in the cardboard and it, uh, and then it molded and the space blackberries didn't grow. Remember that? Time. So that was a setback. So what did I do? Remember what I did? I went and got more blackberries. Where are those blackberries? Here they are right here. Let me find them. And now they're dried out. And we're gonna plant them this week. They're dried out, they're ready to go. How cool is that? And then, you know what else I did? Did this cool thing. In the wardrobe. Hmm. Got raspberries planted. Let's see if there's anything going on with the raspberries. I can see some roots. Can you, hold on, can you see them? I can see some roots, see some roots, see some roots. See that root right there? Look, the raspberries are sprouting, space raspberries. So we had space blackberries, they didn't work out. They, they rooted, but we put them in the wrong soil and we had a setback. Now I get to grow more space blackberries, but we have space raspberries. And I put them in the dark to uh, sprout. Whoop. I put them in the dark. And then we're, so on Friday, Fantastic Friday, we are going to plant raspberries. And we're going to take the lessons that we got from the failure of the space blackberries. We're not planting them in, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to plant them in uh, cardboard in, in this situation. Uh, and we're going to put them in more light because mold and mildew grows in the dark and the, and the damp. So if you got dark and damp together, mold and mildew will grow. If you have dark and damp together, mold and mildew will, will grow. So we're going to put them, we're gonna, when we plant the space raspberries, we're going to put them in soil and then we're going to keep that soil wet, not too wet, but damp and then moist and then, uh, and then put it in the sun. We're going to keep them in the sun. I think that that's really what, where that was the setback. That's what caused the setback is that I didn't put it in enough light. So then the mold grew and then that was it. Once the mold grew, the plant will grow. The mold will kill the plant. So there you go. There's a perfect example of a setback, how it applied with you and me. You've seen the space blackberry thing. You saw the mold. We took it apart last week. Now, we, uh, we put, now, now we've put those uh, black, we've put the raspberries in. We've sprouted them. They've got roots. We're, we're using our experience to move towards success. And now we're going to plant those raspberries. We're going to plant them and we're going to practice everything I just explained. And we're going to use, we're going to use that setback to experience success because space botany is a job. Setbacks. Don't get caught up in setbacks. Really the, the biggest challenge about setbacks is how we feel. We become disappointed. We become frustrated. We, be, we think that we tell ourselves that we, we are bad. We, we are failures. We made mistakes. And not every setback is like that. Some things are just like, yes, we did make mistakes. Yes, we did fail, but that doesn't make us a mistake. And that doesn't make us a failure. It certainly doesn't make you a mistake. And it certainly doesn't make you a failure, no matter what. We learn. And if we don't learn, we're destined to learn. We're destined, that means we're going to learn in the future. So if, we, if, we have a, if you have a class and you don't do the work and you get a low grade, well, learn from that experience. Grumps are always telling us, telling you that, telling you, we are always telling you that. Learn from your experience. It's not easy though, right? However, knowing that that's how it works, that's a critical competitive advantage. 
And knowing this, that you can see failures for what they are, stepping stones and temporary that everyone has, that are experiences that lead to success, you have a critical competitive advantage that will launch your career, that will help you get to space in the same way that it helped Leland Melvin. Astronauts are great people to talk about setbacks. They understand. And that's why I'm, go I'm grateful to introduce this subject to you. Let's see, if, uh, let's see what we got here for questions this week. Look in Twitter, look in Instagram. Don't forget on Instagram, you can hit me up at Mike Mongo, astronaut teacher. I think I've mentioned Vijaya. He, uh, he, he, he is now, let's see. Oh, he wants to be a space. He wants to build a hospital in space. He's asking me about how to build a hospital in space. And we're having a conversation about that. Karthik, what did you do? My aim is to become a space scientist. Here's my friend Karthik. He's wearing his mask, very important. So he, um, he got selected by the ISDC, the National Space Society, and, um, and for the, Interna the National Space Society for the, at, at the, his space colony project, Karthik, got picked to be in the ISDC space colony contest. So that's, that's pretty fantastic if you ask me, that's a, that's a major deal. And so he is working to get, he's working to continue on his career in space. And he stays in contact with me. Oh, here we go. That's him and me right there at the ISDC. Pretty good, right? So, um, I think, I don't know, the, like, a lot of the questions that people ask me this week are like kind of, like, kind of personal. So, you know, the, every, we all have, with, some people have setbacks in their life and they're asking me about how to face these setbacks. Awesome. And so I answer them and give them instruction and give them and really not just instruction, but also insight. Also, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, remember last week we talked about mentors. This is the value of having mentors. Mentors will explain how a setback can turn into a benefit. And so a lot, and so this week I had a lot of those conversations. So what setbacks have you had in your life? If you've had any setbacks that you have any questions about, you feel free to message me. I welcome that. I, I, look, I look to encourage you regardless of what's happened. And I want you to know, bear in mind, if nothing terrible has happened to, happened to you, that's awesome. That is awesome. And if something terrible has happened to you, that's terrible. That's terrible. And either way, you get to move forward. And if you haven't experienced failure, you probably will. You almost certainly will. And you don't need to worry about it. We can prepare by knowing our heart, who we are as people, and by remembering, how am I helping? Even when we fail, even when we make mistakes. And a lot of times they can prevent us from failing and making mistakes. When we think, how am I helping? When I think about B. Johnson, who I love, my mentor, and, uh, and when I think about how would my actions reflect on B. Johnson. Will they be, bring him honor or they, will they bring him shame? And that's, what, and that's how I choose what I do. And like I said, we all make mistakes. But the good news is we can get over it, move on and become and, and enjoy the success we want in our lives. And you're going to be able to do that no matter what the success or what the challenge is. I want you to know that. That's why I really appreciate you being here. No, I'm not joking when I say that I love you. And I'm not joking when I say that you're beautiful. It's 100% true. And it doesn't mean that I, I in the future, we, if, if we work together and we meet, that I don't just like think you're the most awesome thing in the whole world, or that you become more beautiful as you get older and uh, somebody else finds that in you and decides that you're the person for them. Who knows what amazing things are, are in front of you? Who knows? All I'm doing is giving you permission to pursue those amazing things with the, by, by being the truly amazing person that you are. By being the truly amazing person that you are, I'm giving you permission to go after that. Clear the way. Don't worry about stuff that it is, you think is a block. Don't ever worry about what other people think about you. Don't think about that. You just do the right thing 
you trust your heart and you surround yourselves with people you surround yourself with people that you love and who love you and you tell them that you love them and then you go on and achieve whatever goal that you want and in doing that you're going to make this world a better place and that's what i'm counting on so that's it that's all i got to say to you today that's a lot you've been fantastic we're gonna plant some space raspberries on Friday. Fantastic Friday. Maybe I'll bring a friend by. All right? <sighs> Proud of you. Thanks for your attention. You are amazing. In the words of my people, 